The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and we have a wonderful program, Miles. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. Uh, it's a program with Ron Cantor. Yes. And it's God is restoring all things yes. and God is restoring as we've been heralding the restoration of Jesus' identity yes. as a Jewish Yeah, it's man. such a timely message because uh, it's really, we see it pictured in the Old Testament in Joseph's life. Right. Where towards the end of Genesis, he reveals himself to his brothers. Joseph has a type of Messiah and we're living in the day where Jesus is revealing himself to his brothers. He was never a Gentile God. He was never just the Savior of the Gentiles, but he is first and foremost the Messiah of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And Ron's book really displays that, mm -hmm. illuminates that for us. Mm -hmm. It's a really wonderful book. I really enjoyed it. And so, uh, and it's really our life message right. that together we've been walking this walk for a while, uh, explaining to people around us, anyone who will listen, that the Jewishness of the gospel is real, the identity of Jesus as a Jew and the necessity of the church to embrace that in order for us to be prepared for the returning the of the lion king. of the tribe of Judah. Exactly. Yeah. And this book does that. So uh, in a few minutes, we'll hear my interview with Ron Cantor, but let's go to this first. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com, you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Ron, thanks for being with us. I want to ask you right away, why did you write Identity Theft as a, a novel? Well, I, di I didn't originally write it as a novel. In fact, I didn't even intend to write a book. I, was, I have a testimony book called Leave Me Alone, I'm Jewish. It's the first thing I said when someone shared the good news with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were reprinting that, and I, I wanted to beef up the, the Jewish roots part so mm -hmm. a Jewish person would understand that yeah. it's okay for a Jewish person to believe in Yeshua. Right. Well, it just got too big for a chapter. And I said, you know what, let's make a little booklet. Well, the booklet grew up into a book. And then two days before I was going to send it in to the publisher, and it was a self-publisher, uh, nobody knows who we are, and mm -hmm. we, we hired a company to publish the book. Two days before I had this idea that I had written it incorrectly mm. as a teaching, that it would get be far more interesting if it was a novel about a Jewish man discovering the Jewish roots of the gospel through right. a supernatural visitation. Well, I said, well, that's... That's a great idea for somebody else or right. another time. I'm, I'm done. I've birthed this baby, and in two days I'm sending it in. So this is your first writing project of this scope? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. And uh, I got an email just a couple days later from a woman who had helped me edit the book, and she said, Ron, I, I had this vision of a butterfly coming out of a cocoon too early, mm. and it never reached its full potential, and it's your book. And I said, no, I said, delete, I, I am not rewriting this thing. Mm -hmm. And so another woman emails me a day later, almost the same thing. I sit down with my daughter, Danielle. I said, Danielle, I have this idea. I need to know what you think. She said, dad, you've got to do it. Well, I'm not John Grisham. I've, I'm, I've never written fiction. I've told a lot of fiction, my mother will tell mm -hmm. you, but, but I've never written it. And I sat down to write. I said to Danielle, I'm going to write one chapter. And then tomorrow you'll tell me what you think. Well, I wrote one chapter and it's, it, it just flowed. It was so, it was fun. And so the next day I sat down with Danielle, I read it to her and about three fourths into the chapter that I'd rewritten, she burst into tears. Wow. And when she burst into tears, I burst into tears because I thought she likes it. Mm -hmm. and, and I was laughing too, because I was realizing, wait, I just made this up yesterday mm -hmm. and she's, and it's not fiction fit because it's based on history. Right. But that's when I said, okay, this, this could be special. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's, there's something in it for non-believers, for believers, for Jewish people. Tell me about how you, you wrote it regarding each people group that's going to be reading it. Well, when I originally wrote it as a teaching, I certainly wasn't thinking of outreach. Hmm. But as I began to rewrite it as a novel, and originally it was a teaching book in three sections. Mm -hmm. Now it's three books, a trilogy. And in the first part of the trilogy, we really discover the Jewish roots of the faith. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, as I'm writing it, I'm thinking, if, I, if, if I'm searching, this, this could push me over. <laughs> this could be the closer. Mm -hmm. Well, after it came out, I got an email from an Israeli living in the States, mm. and he said, Ron, I found you on Facebook. Somehow I got your book, and uh, I read it, and I'm the guy in the book. You were speaking to me. Oh my gosh. And he came to faith a few weeks after that, wow. and now we're in contact. Yeah. So it's a great outreach book, but I wrote I didn't write it for that. Mm. I wrote it because... Most Gentile believers don't understand that the ethnicity of Yeshua is significant. Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 9, mm -hmm. he said, uh, he starts off by saying, I'm not lying, which is a funny thing for an apostle to say, because right. we pretty much assume the guy writing the Bible isn't lying. Yeah. But he says, I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. What, Paul? What, what, is, what is burdening you? He said, yes. I would trade my salvation exactly. if only the Jewish people would believe. And, right. and Paul was revealing not just his heart. He was writing scripture. Mm -hmm. He was revealing God's heart for the Jewish people. Yeah. And what happened... Uh, and just to go back, the main reason I wrote the book is because I wanted to answer one specific question. What happened between Acts 15 exactly. and 1983? Because <laughs> in Acts 15, the Bible says that there's a group of Jews. In fact, some of them are Pharisees. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that some of the Pharisees were born again believers in the Jewish Messiah, and mm -hmm. they continued to identify as Pharisees. And they come together and they have this big meeting, the first big theological debate. Right. And the question was, what do we do with Gentiles who want to believe in our Messiah? Exactly. And, and some of them said, well, they got to become Jewish. Mm -hmm. and, and that was obvious. That made sense. It was a revelation mm -hmm. that the Gentiles did not have to become Jewish in order to believe in the Jewish Messiah. But for the Jewish guys there, uh, if you had walked up to them and, and told them that they were no longer Jewish, mm -hmm. they would have they thought you're crazy. Where, they were answering the question about the Gentiles. Exactly. This so much the universal situation we're in today on the other end of Acts 15 is what the issue that's before us now, which is when I become a believer, am I no longer a Jew? Which right. many of us go through. I think all of and, us and go through. And that's the first thing I said to myself when I embraced Yeshua in 1983. Mm -hmm. I... I said, I'm no longer Jewish right. I, I, because nobody told me that. But I growing up in America, you don't you can't be Jewish and believe in Jesus. Exactly. And, and, and to be a Jew means you don't believe in Jesus. At least that's it's what I was taught. one defining element. Right. <laughs> you could, I could not have told you what I believed as a Jew, right. but I knew what I didn't believe. Exactly. So that's where we wrote the book. We wanted to find out the history. Where was the turning point? And we found that in uh, one of the big turning points was in the year 49 when Claudius kicked all the Jews out of Rome, mm -hmm. Messianic Jews, traditional Jews, he made them all get out of Rome. Right. And when they left, they took with them something very valuable. Mm -hmm. They took the Torah scrolls, they took the prophets, the writings. Mm -hmm. And so the young Roman church, they had no Bible. Right. A lot of people don't know it, that there was no book of Romans or Galatians. Or, exactly. And so they developed, in the absence of the Jews mm -hmm. who had the scriptures, they developed a theology that mm -hmm. said, God is punishing the Jews. That's right. why they were kicked out of Rome. Right. He's a against them and that grew up to become replacement theology. Exactly. And, and and so a five or six years later, the Jews are allowed to come back into the city of Rome and they're treated very poorly right. by the the Roman Christians. And Paul hears about it and he writes the book of Romans. That's why the R Romans is so strong in Israel. He wasn't just, you know, writing that in a vacuum. There exactly. he was addressing right. a false theology and in Romans mm -hmm. 11 he says, "Hey guys, this is a big deal. Don't judge Israel. Yes, mm -hmm. some of them have been broken off, mm -hmm. but God can graft them back in as he's, he's done with us. Yes. And you stand by faith. Be, be, don't be arrogant, but be afraid. So that was the beginning, even though Paul pleaded with them, right. don't turn against Israel. Right. The church did the exact opposite. It got to the point in the inquisitions right. where Jews were told, you must become Catholic 
or you must leave the country. Right. And the many of the Jews who did convert right. for economic reasons, um, survival, survival reasons. Yeah. And they, you know, wasn't with their own, their whole heart. And yeah. the church was so corrupt at that point. Right. What, what were they converting to? Exactly. But the church had spies. I mean, it was like Cuba or Iran. Right. They would come to your house and they would check on Friday night right. to see if you were lighting Sabbath candles. Exactly. And if you were doing anything Jewish, if you simply just refused pork, the church would arrest you. Right. And you would be burned alive. That was your punishment. You know, Paul has gotten so much of the blame for this. And there's so often you hear that Paul invented Christianity as if it was apart from Jewishness. You do a really good job in the book of pointing out the nine instances where Paul himself goes to the Jew first. It says that in Romans 1.16. He actually does it throughout Acts. And you hear that he is reaching for the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. I have friends who said, oh, it didn't work with the Jews, so he went to the Gentiles. But that's not what his heart was. No, and, and, and it did work with the Jews. One of the misnomers is that the Jews rejected Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, it is true that, that, that as a leadership, mm -hmm. that's where the Jewish leadership came down. We, we don't believe in him. But there was a revival in Jerusalem. The yes. Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that 3,000 men plus right. women and children right. came to faith. And uh, after that, it grew to 5,000 plus women and children. Mm -hmm. And then when Paul comes back to Jerusalem, and if they're blaming Paul, but his heart, mm -hmm. I want to go to Jerusalem. In fact, he says, yeah. I'm willing to die mm -hmm. just to get back to Jerusalem. He gets back to Jerusalem where he meets a guy named Jacob, who most people know as James, exactly. another misnomer. James right. is a great name if you're a chauffeur or <laughs> if you're a, 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 um, a butler. Uh, but the brother of Yeshua's name was not James, it was right. Jacob. Right. Another place where they ethnically cleansed the Jewishness right. of, of the new covenant so mm. that it doesn't seem Jewish. Well, he, he meets Jacob and the other apostles and Jacob says to him, mm -hmm. look, brother Saul, brother Paul, how many tens of thousands of Jews Myriads. have believed yeah. and they're zealous for the Torah. Yes. Is, isn't that interesting? Both and, yeah. Right. So number one, we see that in, in, in many folks' Bibles, it says thousands, but the Greek is, you said it's myriads, myriads yeah. which means tens of thousands. Yes. And, it, and it doesn't say, and they've left Judaism. Yes. It says they're zealous for the Torah. Yes. That's crazy <laughs> if the Torah is bad, as many people teach. Mm. But Paul says in Romans 7, the Torah is good, yes. spiritual, yes. and holy. We were the problem. <laughs> but now under the new covenant, under mm -hmm. grace, mm -hmm. these tens of thousands of Jewish believers that Jacob speaks to Paul about are empowered to live out the law, not under compulsion, but as a, a means of calling. Yes, this is really exciting. Uh, I can't wait to hear some more about this. We'll be back after this. Your financial contributions to Zolid Levitt Ministries enable us to bring you our weekly television series, our monthly newsletter, and our website. But you may not know your gifts of funds also support other ministries that share the gospel here and in Israel through our To the Jew First Fund, Aiton Shishkoff, our man in Haifa, and the Good News Fund. We welcome your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries as we serve together until our Messiah returns. We want to invite you to come with us to Israel. It is a life-changing experience. I've been there over 20 times and it never gets old. It's ancient, but it never gets old. It's endless revelation in the Word. Pastors who come with us say that it's changed, changed their ministry. So we want to invite you to please come with us to Israel. You'll love the land. It belongs to the Lord and you'll love it. So, Ron. Uh, we were just talking about Paul and how uh, there's such misinformation out there about who he was. We always hear that he was Saul and then became Paul. He changed his name. Right. You do a good job of addressing that. Would you tell our viewers about that? Well, when, when I was a new believer, I was taught that, that this guy Saul yes. didn't like believers, yes. Messianic Jews. He persecuted him. Yes. 
But then when he came to faith, yes. he got rid of his Jewish name mm -hmm. and took a Christian name. Mm -hmm. And I just assumed that was true until I thought, wait a minute, there were no Christian names. There's, you know, Paul was not a Christian name when Paul became a believer because it was all new. If anything, Paul was a Latin Roman name connected mm -hmm. to paganism, mm -hmm. if you want to make any case. Mm -hmm. The fact is, is that he never changed his name. The Bible does not say Paul changed his name. It says very simply in Acts 13, 9, Saul, who was also called Paul. The guy had two names, exactly. which, which is very normal. I don't know about you, but as, as, a, as a Jew born in America, I got two names. Right. Every Jewish person that's born outside of Israel right. gets a name connected to their region. In his case, it was Paul. In mm -hmm. my, mine, it was Ron. Right. And... Uh, his Hebrew name was Saul, that, exactly. or Shaul, that he used amongst the Jewish people. Yeah. Mine is Chaim, which yes. you can call me if you want, but I like Ron yeah. better than that. So he never changed his name. Right. He was a Jewish rabbi. He continued to be a Jewish rabbi. Right. That's for our viewers to know that. You know, I am Mordechai, who was also called <laughs> Miles. You know, and we all have two names. We have our family lineage in Hebrew, and then the local name for whatever country or whatever right. place we're in. So that's a great. Uh, we bring great clarity to that issue. Now, what about what's going on for you now with Messiah's Mandate and the other ministries, Ma'oz, the things you're doing now? Tell us about how the book relates to those ministries currently. Well, uh, we have a ministry called Messiah's Mandate. We also work with Ma'oz Israel, they're our covering ministry. Mm -hmm. And Ma'oz has been around for uh, 35, 40 years. Yes. Uh, we have a newsletter that comes out every month that mm -hmm. is uh, just one of the most, uh, I, I, I can say this because I have only been writing in, in it a little bit, but it's one of the most reputable pieces of information coming out of mm -hmm. Israel mm -hmm. about the Messianic movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we in Messiah's Mandate started something a few years called the Isaiah 2 Initiative, where we started taking young Israeli believers to other nations. In fact, our last trip to Nigeria, we did five nights of campaign ministry, mm -hmm. preaching the gospel, signs, wonders, miracles. Mm -hmm. We saw 67,000 people hand in Wonderful. decision cards. Mm -hmm. So we felt like it's great that we're back in our nation, mm -hmm. and it's great that Jewish people are coming to faith, right. but we're also called to be a light to the nation. Exactly. The Bible says, Ki Torah, the, the law shall go forth, forth from, from Zion. Zion. Right. So we began to do that, and, and we're hoping soon to go to Uganda mm -hmm. to partner with our, our dear friend, Pastor Umar Melinde, who was attacked oh, recently yeah. yes. by Islamic fanatics. Half his face was destroyed, blinded in one eye. Yes by acid, and we want to go back with him mm -hmm. as Jewish believers and share the gospel. There. We wrote about him in the Levitt letter, and I think he's being cared for by the Messianic believers in Israel, isn't he? He is, uh, the Israel, the state, or the Tel Shomer Hospital is paying all of his medical bills, Wonderful. hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. but Maoz, we've raised the money to take care of all of his other needs, his mm -hmm. family, we brought them to Israel, we paid for the airfare, we put them in a hotel, and they're just great people. It's such a great expression of the heart of God in our day. You know, this book, folks, this is, I identity theft, and the best way to get a hold of it is through your ministry, isn't it? Sure. Uh, folks can go to idtheftbook.com, and they can order it there. They can also find it on Amazon if they want to download it for their eBooks. Mm -hmm. uh, or, and if folks just want to go to my uh, website, roncantor.com, mm -hmm. we have a thing there called Messianic Jews, the most hated people on earth, yeah. <laughs> which is a free download when people sign up for our newsletter. So roncantor.com takes you to messiahsmandate.org and uh, they can get the book, they can read our blog mm -hmm. and learn more about us. So uh, regarding the publishing of the book, it's going to be out, You're going to be, it's going to be available by the time people see this. And then the, I understand it's part of a trilogy and you end it abruptly. This one ends <laughs> abruptly. I was kind of like on the edge of the cliff and it ends. Yes. And you're setting up for, I think, for two more books. Yes. Well, what happened is when we rewrote it as a, as a novel, mm -hmm. I, I had too much information for just one book. So we, and it was already in three sections. So we decided to do a, a trilogy. Uh, and what's exciting is that we already published it uh, over the summer, but two days after it came out, somebody handed a copy to the folks at Destiny Image. I had no hopes that uh, a major publisher was gonna pick it up. Right. Within three hours of mm -hmm. them getting a copy of the book, they mm -hmm. came to the conference where we are, were, mm -hmm. and they said, we wanna sign you to a book deal. We like this. So, it, so even though it's been in print since last summer, the official uh, release date is March, April of 2013, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very excited about mm -hmm. it. They uh, are going to be doing a national print campaign, and uh, uh, the fact that they're happy about it makes me happy. Oh, well, I, I think it's personal and bigger than personal. It's a wonderful gift to you that the publishers are noticing it. 
But I think you'll also agree with me that it some, says something about the, the sign of the times, where we are, that this message about the Jewishness of Jesus and the importance of Israel is the seminal message yes. for the church in the world right now, and it's not going to go away. It's going to yes. keep becoming more and more important as we see the day approaching. Y Yeshua is not going to return to an anti-Semitic church. Huh. God is turning the heart of the church, and we believe that in, in, in addition to other materials out there, God is going to use this book to open up the eyes of the Gentiles. Let me say this, mm -hmm. just as the Jewish people have been blinded to the Messiahship of Yeshua, mm -hmm. the church has been blinded to the Jewish roots of the new covenant. Exactly. And I get so excited, I get emails almost every day from, from Gentile believers who have never mm -hmm. thought this was important. And they said, Ron, I could not put this book down. Mm -hmm. I, 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 Folks who didn't think it would be interesting mm -hmm. suddenly started reading it and said, I couldn't put it down. Yeah. I think that we're in that season, that, that the church is awakening, we get to be part of that. I mean, here at Zola Levitt Ministries, we've been doing this for 30-something years, but there, this is now spreading around the world, and, and so many churches are awakening and becoming aware of this need to turn from that replacement theology, turn from all of that mishigas, the craziness that led us into this Gentilizing of the church, and to turn back to the original pattern that God set as the Jewish Messiah and Savior of the world. World. And this book does a great job of moving that forward. Uh, what else do you have planned for the future? What's else, what else well, is coming up for you? With, with the, the book coming out, doors have been opening up in uh, Europe. We've been in Switzerland, Germany. We, we do these things called identity theft sem seminars, a six-hour seminar great. where we do the whole teaching. I was just in Singapore, mm -hmm. and Singapore is like the Switzerland of the Far East. Mm -hmm. And uh, some doors have opened to go to a very large mm -hmm. country next to it that is kind of uh, secretive, enclosed, mm -hmm. and the believers are persecuted there. Mm -hmm. So we're going be going into that very large country mm. and we're going to be doing teaching mm. on this because the believers there, there's a revival in China. Mm -hmm. uh, some say as many as a hundred million believers. Yes. And I am told they love Israel, yes. but they don't necessarily have a theology. Right. They don't understand why they love it, right. Israel. Right. And so some doors have opened for us yeah. to go in to teach and to bring some of them to Israel and teach. So we're, we're excited about uh, the coming year. It's exciting. They're, really, it's a sovereign move, the Back to Jerusalem movement. They know it's right. They love the Jews in Israel. They want to preach the gospel through the 1040 window. They want to go into Jerusalem, and it's all vertical. It's all coming from, from heaven to them, and you're going to be able to explain to them why they're in love with Israel and the Jews, which is phenomenal. Ron, this is such a wonderful and timely message. Thank you so much. We're just thrilled to have you here today. And now let's go to some music by another lover of Israel, our founder, Zola Levitt, right now. That was lovely music by Zola. Yeah. Miles, God is doing such a work today yes. in the body of Christ yes. and in the world. Yes. And he's also restoring the Jewishness of Jesus yeah. to, to the world. Yeah, it's really, really our life story, isn't it? Right. I mean, I remember when I became a believer, I thought I was the only one, just right. like Ron, the only one who's ever gone through this. In fact, when I eventually called the Jews for Jesus and I said, does this happen to anyone else? They said a few of us. Right. And I remember going to New York on their campaign and seeing their building, it says, Jews for Jesus established 32 AD, give or take a year, right there on the stone. And really, that's the story. This is a Jewish story right. that goes back 2,000 years, and actually before that, goes back fully 4,000 years to when Abraham was called out, mm. and the line of the Messiah came through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is called Israel. Yes. And now here we are at the end of the age, and God is restoring, like you say, the Jewish identity of the gospel, of who Jesus is, and it's a message that's only going to increase in the need for the world to hear it, the need for our Jewish brothers and sisters to know about it, 
and uh, more and more as we see the day approaching. Yeah, the Jewishness of Jesus in content and in, in context. Yes. You know, so we're seeing him yeah. in his in his everyday Orthodox life yes. that he lived. Yes, an observant when, Jew. When, yeah. they, when they first, the conflict was, can the Jews, uh, can they let the Gentiles in, exactly. right? Exactly, right. Exactly, the, should, should Gentiles become Jews in order to follow Jesus? And now, for us in the modern day, it's do I become a Gentile right. when I become a believer? Right. And right. What Ron's book is doing so eloquently is helping us understand those issues. He's using the novel format in order to draw people in, and then he's laying out some very important theological truth in the form of a novel. It's a brilliant work, and uh, I think we'll hear more and more from Ron as the days go by. You know, I, I just uh, know that our people, our viewers, need to hear this message. So many of them, they love Israel, but they're, they're burdened to see their pastors and their leaders right. understand this message also. And I think we need to approach it with humility and with grace. And whenever we're trying to displace mm -hmm. replacement theology, it has to be done with really the humility of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We really need to be careful and consistent and serve and in that way win the hearts of people and from there they understand these messages. That's what happened to us. Right. I was serving local pastors by being their counselor for their people and then eventually they listened to me about Israel so much so that 50 of them came with me to Israel and their lives were affected by the reality of the gospel in the land today. And that's multiplied today. It, it is. So God is reaching many people yes. with the message yeah. of His Jewish Messiah, yes. Jesus, Yeshua. Yes, yeah. and we're in that season, yeah. and it will increase as we see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. um, I just... Uh, it's I'm, so important to know. I remember the first time you said you started to read the Bible, that yeah. it was all the names that you thought were Catholic names, right. they were actually Jewish identities. Exactly. You know, Mary is Miriam, yes. you know. and yeah. yeah, the whole book was Jewish, and it shocked me that the New Testament, Brit Chadashah, was a Jewish book. Right. And I thought, why didn't my rabbi tell me this? Well, he didn't. You know, and hopefully he found out about this before he left the planet. I don't know. But the fact is that we're bringing this message to the world all the time, especially through our ministry here right. at Zola Levitt Ministries. And so as we go today, we want to remind you, as we always do, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Your financial contributions to Zola Levitt Ministries enable us to bring you our weekly television series, our monthly newsletter, and our website. But you may not know that your gift of funds also makes a difference in Israel through our support of the Jerusalem Archaeology Fund, Bridges for Peace, and the Lone Soldier Fund. We welcome your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries as we serve together until the Messiah returns. Also, please call toll-free or write to receive our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. It's absolutely free and contains insightful article and news commentary with a refreshing perspective you won't get from the mainstream media. The Levitt Letter is also available at levitt.com, along with current and archived TV programs, our national airing schedule, and much more. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.